one of my subscribers up in Canada, his name is Alan, he had this antique, this is the original Honey Bee Super Mini RC Helicopter. Uh, was not made by East Guy or anything, it was like the preliminary stuff. And he sent this to me. It's used in the box and it's definitely an antique uh, in the RC world. Uh, not very sophisticated, but he sent me this box of parts and the whole kit. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like inside. We have some blades, gears, this is all new stuff that was inside this box. Uh, this is what's here. We've got the uh, tail booms, parts, rotor heads, frame, plastic parts, screws. There's a motor in here somewhere. There it is. And uh, reminds me of the Super Mini that I used to have that flew pretty good, but it had two tiny motors in it. And uh, this one's got one, so this may be a little better. I'm going to try and put it all together. I'm not sure. I've got the manual here, uh, lots of uh, parts to put together, a lot of reading uh, and set up. I'm going to buy a radio for it, and uh, let's see what happens. Back in the early 70s, this is the helicopter that I learned to fly on. This is American RC Mantis, uh, 40 size gas engine, uh, fairly big. As you can see here, uh, the size of this is quite bigger than you would imagine. And then uh, some of the early electric came on the scene. Nightcads were the only uh, batteries we had. This is a Skylark Ishimasha. This is the very first electric helicopter to be brought into the United States. It had a belt drive on a pulley back here. As you see the belt is broke, which it always did. Twin 540 CAN motors, mechanical speed control, Another pretty heavy helicopter. Then came the subject of video I'm making today, which is the original Honeybee. And uh, this is not by E Sky. Well, after I built that and had so much trouble, I began experimenting with my own uh, helicopter designs, especially there was so much trouble with tail rotors. This was the very first electric tail rotor. There's the motor. I sent videos all over the United States, Europe, to uh, Kyosho and everybody in Japan, and of course, her. there's nothing but electric tail rotors on a lot of helicopters today. Then I started experimenting with my designs without a tail rotor. Uh, forward flight only helicopters so real RC airplane pilots could fly a helicopter without having to spend the time to learn to hover because there were no gyros in those days. This was the first version of the Hyperfly, uh, what Kyosho did with my design.
Okay, first thing we're going to do is break in the motor. Uh, it even tells you in the directions. It's a good good way of doing it. 1.5 pen light battery to run the motor in a reverse direction, low speed for half hour. Apply one drop of lubricant to the bushings during running. And then run a 3 volt battery in it, in clockwise direction, higher speed for one hour. That'll break in the motor. So uh, I've got it sitting here running right now. Uh, I'm actually running it on 3 volt. Okay. And uh, by the way, this helicopter does not have a tail rotor gyro. They, uh, they didn't make them in those days. Alright, kind of bummed I went down and got, I cannot find an Allen wrench small enough to fit in that to adjust it. So I had to readjust this whole assembly on this side so it would work by just bending the wires. Something just flew off. Tail rotor. Not enough lift now. Well, everything just uh, keeps going wrong here. Now what? All of the teeth on this gear have uh, come off. Uh, right there with the motor and the gear. All of the teeth are ground off. Thank you. 
the motor smoking. That's why they didn't last very long those days, folks. That baby is really smoking. Okay, here's what it cost me to put the old antique honeybee back together and actually make it fly. Uh, I wrote down the stuff here. I think we're all grateful for the technology today. Uh, 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 uh.